Greetings, friend. The weird trick I'm about to show you will solve this fantastic Sudoku using set equivalence theory. Not only that, later in the video, I have something exciting to share with you, so keep watching. Click below if you want to give it a go, and with that, it's solving time. Okay, normally with set, you'll look for columns that have similar digits, and I'm not really seeing that many here. You got a 1352 here, you got a 79 here, 1246, 29. Doesn't really work. Sometimes you also kind of do the fist and fell ring, you know, which is like this area, and you're looking and you go, okay, does this equate to what's out here? And really not because a lot of the same digits that are in here are also out in these outer boxes. It's not going to work. So this is the weird trick. All right. You are, you can use set equivalence theory. What you want to do is kind of look at where do we have a lot of restriction in these givens? And look right here. You'll notice right here, there is a lot of givens, all right? And so if I put that in blue, there's a lot of givens. So if we could find an equivalent set of the digits, one to nine, you know, 16 digits that match this, then we can use set equivalence theory. If you're not that familiar with set equivalence theory, I will put a link later on to my tutorial. Uh, keep watching, but the basic idea is that you know that a Sudoku column, row or block, so a house, has the digits one through nine. So there's one through nine in this column one, in this block seven, or in this row nine. We know that. So we can do that and extrapolate and go, okay, well, this is digits one to nine right here. Maybe somewhere else there's a digits one through nine. So like how this has a digits one through nine, this would also be the digits one through nine, and it'd have a shared cell right here. So we know these eight digits would match these eight digits. Okay, that's the basics of set. So right here is like, how do you accomplish and capture this set and compare it to another set of digits that we can use? And so I'll, I'll show you that right now. In fact, let's clear all this out. And so if we looked and said, okay, you know, these are in four nice rows, right? This is four rows, four individual sets of digits one through nine. Okay, great. Now, if we came down and we tried to, make an equivalent, we could put these columns down and we'll put them in orange and go, okay, well, these five columns are the digits one through nine, but there's five columns here. And it's four rows. So it's still one additional set. We could do that, but that's not going to be ideal. Well, we notice if you look down here, this has nothing to do with what we're trying to solve. And this is an additional set of the digits one to nine. So if we take that out, now in the orange, you have four sets of the digits one to nine. So we know this is one complete set of the digits one to nine. We just took that out from all the orange. And so then if you take away everything that has double, we know those digits are the same in both sets. So now there's an orange set and there is a blue set. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is look, is there any ones that are the same in both of these. So let's look right here. And you go, well, we have a three in blue, and we have a three in orange, so we can eliminate those considerations. So we know, you know, this three right here can be represented by that three in the blue. Uh, this seven can be represented, eh, it was represented by that seven right there. It doesn't matter which seven you use. And then now you have the digits one, four, five, and six in the blue. You have the digits three, seven, eight, and nine in the orange. Okay, so can we use uh, set equivalent. The big thing is, will these digits, you know, the empties, the givens, uh, the givens in one set, will it match up with the unknowns in the other? Before I figured that out, this does remind me of another uh, set puzzle that I did by Bondi. I'll put that at the end, so you will want to check that out. So let's count all the blue digits: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now. How many empty orange cells do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. So by set equivalence theory, we know that these eight digits have to be one, four, five, and six. And it's going to be two ones, two fours, two fives, and two sixes. Because we showed that the given blue in here have to be somewhere in these orange cells. Okay, now let's go over and check out the orange. One, two, three, four, five, six orange givens. 
And how many empty cells we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. This is a perfect case of set. And I love how DJV did this. I've seen a similar pattern to this, but nothing like this. I've not solved it where I applied set like this in any of my other puzzles. I've not seen it in a classic stoker. This is awesome. You're going to love this. Before I start removing cans, I want you to know I'm also going to solve this using traditional means for my Buy Me A Coffee Smarty Party members. If you want to join the Smarty Party and take advantage of a great puzzle pack that DJV put out this month, click on the pinned comment below. Okay, so we can go in here and go four, five, and six means this can't be a four, five, or six. So we know right away this cell has to be a one. You can solve that for a one. All right, what else can we eliminate? Uh, I can't have a three right there because of this three. And now with this one and this six, you can eliminate the one and six, which creates a four, five naked pair. This is the power of set. This is great. All right, because of this three, you can eliminate threes from D cells. Because of this seven, you can eliminate a seven right there. And because of this seven, you can eliminate sevens from all these spots. So that's nice. And with this seven, you can eliminate a seven from right here. So you know what I know? There's only one place left before a seven. And we know that there's one seven in the orange. So we can solve this cell right away with a seven. And the reason being, these are all could only be three eights and nines. And so I can solve that with set because I know that the this orange seven has to be somewhere in this blue. It just has to be. And if you're not quite sure about that, I do want to give you a link to my set tutorial. So check that out. I'll put a link right here, and you will want to check that out, and you'll understand the basics of set equivalence theory. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. Okay, let's keep moving on here. What else can we do? We got this one, we got this four, which means we can eliminate the one and the four from right there. And then can we mainly anything from there? Nope. But with this five, we can eliminate a five from right here. And we can eliminate a one from right here. So I'm just kind of whittling down all of the candidates here before we start doing some solving. And what is this going to do for us? Okay, what it does is now we got these ones in rows one and two. We got this one coming up. So the one place left for a one up here in block three. Nice. And then what we can do is see we got this eight coming up. There's only one place left for an eight. Awesome. And then this is going to be a two or a nine. So I'll mark the two or nine as a naked pair. But then what that does is now you got this eight coming down, this eight, this eight cutting across. There's only one place left for an eight. And I'll keep these marked in here because we're going to need that for a second. We're still going to use a little bit of that set as we move along. And now at this eight in row seven and nine, we know this cell can't be an eight. So the only place left for an eight and block seven's right there. So we can eliminate this as an eight. And Nice. And now with this eight, we can actually solve this for a nine. I just saw that. So we can eliminate the nine from right there. It gives you a three, eight, nine naked triple, which is nice. So let's go back up here. You notice there's only a two, eight, nine remaining, right? Well, this cell can't contain an eight or a nine. So this has to be your two, which gives us a nine and two right here. And then we can solve over here for and eight and now with this eight and this eight and this eight cutting across we can actually solve this cell for an eight as well are there any other eights uh yep we still have a couple of places that eights could be so let's kind of focus up here we're missing two digits from this uh row two so we need a five it looks like and a three i got my three right here so here's your five and there's your three okay and then we need looks like a two and a nine i got my two right here so here's your two and here's your nine. You see how nice set uh, does this? And I can tell you, if you do the traditional solve, it's not as clean as this. It's going to be a little bit harder to solve for you. All right, we got an, an eight and we got a six up there. I can't solve that. I'll just mark those. And then what I want to see is, you know, this is a five, six is a naked pair. So what that leaves us with is a two, four. So I can put the two, four right there and we'll get back to that. What do we have right here? It looks like we're missing a three and a five. Uh, I got the five. It's got to be one of these two cells. So I know I can solve this for a three. And then that's going to be our five. And then we can remove the five from right there. That gives us just a four, six. All right. Making great progress here. What's left here? We got two missing cans, a one and a seven. I'll put the one and the seven there, which is going to now give us with just a three and a nine. You'll notice that the nine 
can't be here. So this has to be our nine. And now we can solve that nice naked triple, right? So this nine means this is an eight, means this is a three. Okay, so really quick, we got one seven, one three, two eights, and two nines. So one seven, one three, two eights, and two nines. You see how set worked and everything's working just right by the way we do that? We can mark that for three. I do want to point that out to you. And we're still working on solving the rest of these cells in the orange. Okay, three, five, looking like a one, two, four, and a six. Okay, I got it. This can't be a two because of this two. These can't be two, so this has to be your two. And now with this one, that would be a four, six. So I actually know this has to be a one because that's the only place left for a one. I'll put the four, six there just to kind of give us that naked pair. Nice. And now we have the two ones. We actually know the rest of the cells can't contain any ones, and that's the way it looks like anyway. Awesome. All right, what do we have now to finish up? It looks like we still need a nine in here. I got two nines in rows four and six, and this has got to be a four or a six. So I'll mark that. Uh, this can't be a five anymore because of the five that's already here. Great. And we're moving along. We're moving along. What can be across this? Looks like a two a three and a four, so that could be a three, four, and that's gonna be a two, three, four. I can't do much with that yet, but if we kind of shift our focus a little bit, I bet we can get some more solving in. All right, let's look now down here. What do we have? It looks like two, three, four, eight, nine, so we need a one, five, six, seven. Okay, so this can be a one, five, six, Looks like this could be a one five seven and then with the one and the seven gone this is going to be a five six and so this is kind of nice now look what we have we have a naked triple right there right four five and six are limited to the same three cells so actually four five six can't be anywhere else along this uh column like along column eight so that means we can eliminate a four from right there and this has got to be a two three and you notice that the three can only be in one spot now. So we can actually solve that for a three, and we can solve that for a two. Great. And this is going to open us up because this gives us a four. It gives us a two. This gives us uh, the six and the four right there. Nice. And now we're looking because of this three. This has got to be your four. That's got to be your six. And we're going to be able to figure out this naked triple. That's a five. That's a four. And that's a five. Awesome. We've not needed any other advanced strategies since we started solving this puzzle. Uh, what do we need right here? Looks like it needs a seven and five. I got my five, so there's five. There's your seven, all right? And then coming down here, we got the seven and the five. We know this now has to be a one, and we can finish up this full house by solving a three there. And stick around at the end. I do have another great set puzzle for you. I do want you to check that out. Because it's one and a five, this is going to be your six. That's going to be your seven. That's going to be your one. I love gobbling up and being able to solve all these BVCs. Okay, this six means this has to be a four. Awesome. And then what do we have right here? It looks like it be a six or a seven. Can't solve the six or seven. I won't mark that because I want to gobble up some more BVCs first. Because of the eight here in column five, this has got to be your six. That's going to be your eight. Nice. And now what do we have left? It looks like a seven and a nine. Here's my nine. So here's your nine and here's your seven. Now I'll come back here and go, this is your seven. And that's your six. This is going to be your six. And that is your five. All right. And you can check and see now that we fill out all the orange and we got two ones, we got two fours, we got two fives, and we got two sixes set. Clues three worked out really well for us. So let's finish this out. We're missing a one, and our last digit is a five. You need to watch this other video if you want to solve set equivalence theory even better. Thank you, DJV, for letting me feature this fantastic Sudoku. And thank you so much for watching.